lots of people are confused between the different automation sections that uh, Zo is, and this is why I decided to have this type of session today. If you will go to the automation and process management section sections, you can see that you have uh, two different uh, uh, sections with different type of automations. Even though process management is a different tab than automation, I still consider most of them as, as automations. The first one will be the workflow rules. And the workflow rules are set of activities that will take place when something happens. As an example, let me just open this tab as well. So let's assume that I'm going to this record and I like to change uh, the phone number. So whenever the phone number is being entered, I like to run some kind of a function and the function will change it to plus one. So it will be a, a North America number, for example. So that's something that I can do in the background. In order to do it, I will use the workflows as an example. We'll run here some kind of a, of a small workflow, change for number. And that's something common that we're doing with the, when you have SMS, for example. So the, the criteria will be when a record uh, is changing and the specific field will be the phone number. This is when we're going to do it for, let's say, all the leads, or maybe all the leads that their phone number is not empty. And then we can run a custom function that is basically adding the plus one. So that will be the use of, of the workflows. Whenever something happens in the record, it might be a change, might be when a new record is being created, might be when, let's say I have here the, uh, where is my follow up date? Yeah. So let's say that the follow up date, whenever the follow up date arrives, I like the owner of this lead, the person who owns the lead, in this case is Bernie Flintstone. Anyway, uh, so whenever the follow up date arrives, I can send a click message or maybe I can send an email to Bernie and tell him, you know what, you need to follow up with uh, uh, Leo Isaac. Okay. So that's something that I can do. I can do using workflows based on date or based on an action that's taking place on the record. So that's the use of the workflows. The schedules is a, it's a different type of automation that cannot be used by most people. So I would, if I were Zo, were Zo, I would probably push the schedules into the developer space and I will show you why. When I'm going to create a new schedule, let's give it a name. So let's say change uh, birth date. And I will have or to choose an existing function that was created by a developer in advance. And as you can see, nothing is coming here. Or I can write my own. So in any case, if you are not a developer, this is worthless. You cannot do anything with this section. The idea, let me just write something stupid here just so we can, I can show you what it means. which is basically nothing. But once you have this function, and usually those kind of function will be used to check uh, duplications. So I can run once a day a function that is checking duplications. Uh, it can check for problems in records. So it's something that's being done on a daily basis or so on. So I can choose when the date uh, will start what will be the hour and also the intervals, if it's one time, if it's hourly, if it's every day, month, year, and so on. 
So that's something that I can do with, uh, with the schedules. But as I said before, I don't think that it's supposed to be under automations. It should be moved to the developer space because most people cannot use it. The action section, which I think it's very, very cool. So whenever you, you work with uh, workflows or blueprints or different automation sections, most of the time you will create an email template, a task, some kind of a field update, a webhook or a function. So whenever you are having those, so categorize them under the action section. And you can see here, for example, under email notifications, you can have your different email notifications. And um, those, for example, those four, the attempt one, two, three, four being used in the leads blueprint. And this is, for example, an email template, not template, sorry, notification, an email notification that is being used in the deals module uh, when you have a workflow. So it's a one place that you can see all your notifications in the system. It's very useful when something crazy is going on. I had a client that uh, is, uh, uh, his clients got some crazy emails from his CRM. And when we went here in five minutes, we were able to see that uh, one of his employees just played with the workflows and he created the stupid workflow that is just sending crazy amount of emails to all its clients, okay? So that's, that's something that uh, you can see here. If you go to the tasks, surprisingly, you can see all the tasks that you created for your automations. Field update actions will be also here. Webhooks, if you have any that are going to a third party. And of course, custom functions that you also have everything here. So basically, this is a one place that you can see everything that's going on in your system related to your automation. Okay. Let's go back. Assignment rules. The assignment rules, um, most of the things that you're doing with the assignment rules, you can also do with the workflow rules. So it's not really such a significant section. What I don't like about the assignment rules is that the assignment rules will function only when a webhook is being initiated or API call. For example, whenever you have someone coming from your website or from Zapier or any kind of integration or Zoho forms, but what happens when you create it manually or you're using imports or something like that? So uh, I don't like so much that the assignment rule is not taking place on all the lead creations or deal creations, but it is what it is. Whenever you're running the, the assignment rules, you will be able to select on which module you like to work on. And usually it will be on the leads module. And you will be able to give some kind of a criteria that will assign records to a specific owner. That's the idea. So let's say that you have a team of five people. Each one is serving a different uh, geographic area. You can have here some kind of a uh, criteria that's saying that, let's say if uh, people coming from, let's say from Canada, it will go to, um, if the country is Canada, for example, then it will go to this user, for example. So you can, you can assign automatically, but as I said before, you need to understand that it will, not, it will not take place all the time. It will take place only when it's coming from a webhook or API. So that's a disadvantage. Case escalation rules, I'm not going to talk about it because we, uh, I don't even consider the, the cases a, a module as anything. If you want cases, just go to Zodesk thousand times better. Scoring rules is very, very interesting. I have, uh, a, I have really good uh, feeling that uh, the scoring rules is going to evolve to, to more things. Imagine that you have, let's say, 100 different uh, leads coming to your system. You will need somehow to put your 
time into the leads that's making sense. Some businesses will not have many leads, and that's fine. But when you're starting to have lots of leads or you're a very busy person and you have some leads, you need to know when to put the time into the lead or not. And you can have here some different criterias when to give more credit or more points to a specific lead. For example, let's say that uh, in the email section, you can have here a criteria. So when you have incoming emails, which means your client is sent or your lead is sending you emails, you can just bump up his points because getting an email from your prospect, it's a positive sign. And you can also write here how many points, okay? You can also have uh, in the email insight, if, for example, there is a bounce, I can subtract 10 points or I can subscribe, if subscribe, subtract even more. Uh, when, uh, uh, for example, I'm sending an email and the, the lead will click on it, will click on the link that they inside this email, I can give him more points because it shows an intention. So you can see that you have different ways to give points to your lead. And eventually you can create views and those views can show the score. And based on the score, you can start working on the leads. I have a friend that is running uh, lots of campaigns. So he has a massive amount of leads coming to his system. And he is using the score system to know when people are opening emails, when they're uh, clicking on them, uh, when they're asking questions. So all those are positive signs that the lead is really, uh, uh, really wants to have more information. You also have a, a rule that is saying that if the description is filled with some kind of a request from the lead, then he's giving him more points, which means the lead spent more time giving information, which means probably it's a good thing. So that was the, the scoring rules. Um, those two, I'm going to create some uh, videos about them. No, the marketing arbitration and, and segmentation is just two sections that uh, one, the marketing uh, arbitration, you can see where business is coming from. So let's say that uh, when there is, in terms of your leads, for example, where they're coming and in what order, and I will create a video about it. It's a bit more complicated. The segmentation is a way for you to segment your clients. For example, people that pay the most, people that have the most deals compared to, to people that have no deals. So you can segment them and see where to put your time. Very, very important things. The blueprint, as you already know, uh, I talked about blueprints a lot. It's a way for you to have a step-by-step -step approach that you can run automations while you're clicking. As an example, if you try to call the lead and it did not answer, you can run automation in the background that will send an email to the, to the lead to tell him that you try to call him and it will also uh, grab the comments and will push them into the notes section. So you can do lots of cool stuff. And this is how it looks like when you go to the record itself. It's just a bunch of clicks. So you click on the button, it's doing something, and then it's done. Okay, so the, the brain is really in the background where you have the code and not here. The employee is supposed to know how to click the buttons while the developer or the developer of the CRM supposed to build it in a way that your employee don't need to do much. And it's also, by the way, reducing dramatically the education uh, curve when you have a new employee. A approval process and review process, both of them are when you need to approve something. In the approval process, you will have some kind of a criteria. And let's say that when I have a quote as an example, um, I like to have, 
I like to have some kind of an approval process on the quote. And whenever, for example, the quote stage is changing to, uh, let's say, confirmed or even before, even negotiation, I like to be able to get it for approval so I can check that the salesperson provided the correct discount, the correct amounts, products in the inventory, whatever it is. So this is how I can do that. And once you have those uh, rules in place, second, let's assign it for Bernie. He's always my guy. And when, when you do that, you can also say what happened uh, on approval and what will happen on rejection. So you can send emails, you can change fields, you can send click messages, you can do a thousand things here. Very, very cool. So this is a nice system. The other one will be the review process. And the review process, I also created a few videos about them on YouTube and on my courses that you can see what happened in the review process. Basically, whenever you have a record and in the record you will have uh, multiple fields, I can set the review process for certain fields just so I can review as a manager what my team is doing. Now, it's great, for example, when you have some data entry jobs and you have records coming in and you just want to verify a few things. So you as a manager, you will get it. You have check boxes or access beside the, the fields and you can just approve or, or decline different changes. So it's also, it's, a, it's very, very cool to have uh, this feature if you need to. And the command sender is the last one, which I already created multiple videos about it. It's a way to show you a high level. Uh, let's see if I can not make a draft. Yes. Okay. So this is this is basically it's a it's a way for you to see the entire process and to have some kind of a funnel of how many people started a specific business process and then you can see a funnel of how people go from the beginning of the process and so on. So it's also something very, very cool. So I hope that by now, by giving you this high level breakdown, you can understand what each automation is doing. So whenever you create your system, you're able to pinpoint of if it's a workflow or a blueprint or an approval process. Okay, so I, I hope that I was able to give you some value. Mm -hmm.